Hey guys, how are you? I hope you're doing so well today. Thank you for taking this now moment to be here with me and hang out with me for a little while longer than normal. Also a little bit more organized than normal. I know that sometimes I just spit things out and whatever comes through and that is a beautiful process too. But what I've done is I've actually accumulated a lot of topics that have been coming up for me personally, for clients, for my friends, for, for a lot of things that I've been noticing and patterns and also that have come forward in quantum healing sessions. So before we begin, I'll be quick with this. Um, Patreon, if you enjoyed what we did live on YouTube, we do that in a more personal way on Patreon for 11, 11 a month. Up to you, it's there if you want it, if it resonates with you. If it doesn't, it's not your problem, not your problem. Um, I opened up November for quantum healings. That is on my website, the square side below. Um, yeah, so November is open. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Uh, I might have a surprise at the end of this video. I've kind of had an idea for something. I just haven't decided how I'm going to do it yet. So maybe at the end of this video, I'll, I'll, if it comes through, I'll do it, right? And if not, I'll make a separate video. No big deal. So I actually had intentions. I kind of wanted to do this live, but I felt like I wanted to do this in a more organized fashion. Um, that way, you know, if you need to come back and you're like, I can't remember, um, I want to see how this resonates with me in this now moment. I think that's that's one of the things too, is you're like, well, I feel like that's something that's in my awareness at this time and you can jump back and, and see if it resonates with you. And if it doesn't, like no big deal too. I'd also like to say like, I was feeling like naming this like surviving the great awakening but we are thriving through the grave awakening so i just wanted to shift this just a little bit but you know I, it does kind of feel like there's so much going on there's so much intel there's so much so much going on that it's imperative and important that we get back to ourselves and our own knowing at this time and that's been my whole goal this entire time i'm like back to the self back to the self straight up consciousness with creator's energy too so I wanted to start by saying full disclosure, not everything will resonate with you. Only take what resonates with you. These are my experiences, some of my friends, some of my sessions. All of these things are just experiences and you only need to take what is truth within you. You'll know it'll flow through your body. Also imperative to remember that we all have different roles on this planet at this time. So if you enjoy jumping into Intel and it's something that doesn't make you emotionally drained and you can look from it at a neutral standpoint, there is no wrong or right in that either. So I just wanted to say that, but for those of you who are feeling drained by Intel or things like that, this might be a good suggestions and things moving forward. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to address that. And I also would like to address that there is nothing wrong with channels who specifically do Intel too. I don't have a problem with that. That is, it is not our job and responsibility for them to put what we want them to put out. It's our job and responsibility to turn it off if it doesn't resonate, or if we can look at it from a neutral standpoint and only take in information that resonates with this, us and within our body, okay? No big deal. However this path is for everyone is going to be different and that is absolutely okay. So the first thing that I wanted to take a moment and talk about was discernment and our responsibility. So going back to what I was just saying a minute ago, it is not that channel's job to sift through the information. Now, I am one of those people that's very, very passionate about with great power comes great responsibility. If you have an audience, what are you putting out there? Is there fear based? What is that? But at the end of the day, we have to take responsibility for our actions and what we're watching and what we're putting into our knowing. Does it feel good? Does it not? And you might even have a neutral point for something. And if you have a neutral point for something, do you want to take, do you want to play into it and collect the information? Do you not? The other thing that I've kind of noticed throughout this is we are so aware that the powers that were have been lying to us about so many things. It is so hard to know what the truth is. Again, it is not going to be so black and white based on who you're watching and what you're taking in and your own spiritual evolution and calibration point is what is going to resonate with you and your truth. 
For example, I think we all have been through this. Someone may have resonated with me in the past. They might not anymore. Uh, this information might have been a truth to me. Now it's not. We're kind of going through that and sifting through it. And that's our responsibility to sift through it. One of the things I will say, though, is we are so quick to know that they powers that were <laughs> that they have lied to us about and be so careful medical system um <laughs> you know the the uh the media yeah like I, I i'm not gonna go too in depth in that but you know if you know and you're in an awakening you're in the great awakening at this point you're aware you know that we have been bamboozled bamboozled and lied to I think the other aspect of this is we are so open-minded, which is so beautiful, but sometimes we're so open-minded to the point that we instantly will take something as a truth if it's the opposite of what they have been doing. All I'll say about that is this and that are true. So it may just be based on your consciousness level. Don't take everything as a truth, even if it's coming from a source that you really, really like or anything like that. It's all about your truth and your consciousness level. Sift through it. I think text and information coming in is beautiful. If you can look at it from a neutral point, like, ooh, that feels good. I call it like collecting information. Ooh, that feels good. Ooh, that one doesn't, but that's okay. And I respect their path, okay? Um, there's more about what the system has been doing that I'd like to talk about, but I don't want to feed the system anymore. And, and, and that goes into what are we feeding? And I've kind of had this conversation quite a bit. Um, are we feeding ego? Are we feeding victimhood? Are we feeding shadow aspects? And I was going to go a little more into depth about that, but I actually, I call it feeding the beast. Um, I know there's the stare, the story of the two wolves. This doesn't mean that we override our emotions and our feelings but how can we shift out of them we have tools in our tool belt to shift out of them joanne made a great point today of gratitude being one of those tools so i obviously will link her video uh, below and i already shared it too so if you've already watched it that's awesome this uh video is a little bit about the shadow aspects of the self and other people's shadow aspects too and how we how we navigate that and how we can alchemize that too so all I'll say with that is feel for truth versus words and listening. Um, it's all about our body responses, our gut and intuitive knowings. How does this make me feel? One thing that I have trouble with personally is that I like to see the good in everyone. And I think that's a beautiful thing. I am amazed and proud of myself for that. But I also have this part of me that if something doesn't feel right, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings or I I, uh, I tiptoe and I think we're at a point of full authenticity and being honest and truthful to ourselves. Not so it's intentions that it changes their mindset, but intentions so that they know our truth and how we feel because at the end of the day, um, I wouldn't want things to be hidden from me so it's also letting everything come to the surface that maybe you haven't addressed at this time you might notice um that being magnified at this time too so I, again i'm going to link that video about the shadow aspect and the shadow aspects coming up at this time um okay this is a this is a hard one because we've worked in time for such a long time and I don't really have necessarily a problem with it like windows of time it, it's fine but I have been noticing a shift in absolutely letting go of time what is time even at this point you stop to you the timeline weavers my friends you stop you speed it up when you're having more joy don't you notice that you can enjoy the present moment a little bit more enjoying that present moment um I don't think it's appropriate for me to be like, if they're working in timing, they're lying. That's not true. That's not necessarily true because who knows if they received information and they placed a date on it with their with their conscious mind versus this could still be a truth, but the date didn't pan out how how it because time is irrelevant at this time. At this time, time is irrelevant. Wow, <laughs> what a paradox, right? In this space, time is irrelevant. So be really careful with those dates. Um, if people are putting dates on things, maybe be aware of them and neutral to them. Wow, that would be so cool if that does happen, um, but I'm not gonna be attached to that date because I find that as those dates go by, we like 
it kind of gets us down. Like there'll be a set date that this is going to happen then. And then we emotionally are loosed and drained from that energy too, okay? Um, there is a great power at this time in surrendering to the unknown. This is what I desire. This is what I hope happens for the highest good. But at the end of the day, can I surrender and accept that it is happening in every now moment? It is happening in this space, but I accept and surrender to divine alignment and divine timing at this time. Um, the other thing is, I don't think this is as much of an issue as it used to be back in the day with the toxic spirituality. One thing about toxic spirituality is that we can't feel or we're not supposed to feel or it's always rainbows and butterflies and you're always going to be a bright beam of light no this is a very very difficult challenge many of us have been put through perpetual dark nights of the soul but can you look at said dark nights of the soul from the higher perspective realizing oh my gosh look at how much i've grown i am so amazed and so proud of myself that i was able to overcome that and as those things come back up i can observe them and my emotions and my responses um I know too that for me personally, my um, the balancing act of this is when I'm down, I can go real down. So that's when self care is imperative. You treat yourself so lovingly, so gentle, so soft. You express those emotions, crying. <laughs> eat your ice cream, be gentle with yourself, give yourself that time to do that. But then do you have little baby steps in your routine to help you get out of that slump and that funk? For example, for me, if I know I'm going to get up and do my yoga, I get up and I do my yoga. It, but I don't have to. If I miss it a day, I'm not going to be hard on myself. Very, very gently moving through this, but having practices to get you back in that routine. And it's not always going to be perfect and pretty. Feel your feels and move through it. That is important. Important. Um, and that goes back to kind of like we can only control ourselves. So as we're having these old things come to the surface at this time, we, we can't control what they're doing. We can't control what another channel is putting out there. We can't control what our family is saying to us because that's them and that's their expression. All we can control is how we respond. And even if I mess up and I get triggered, then I am aware that I messed, not messed up because is it really messing up? I'm aware that that placed a point on a trigger that I may not have had or I may have overlooked or a trigger that I thought I'd healed, right? So the triggering coming up and mirroring each other at this time too. Take a big deep breath before you respond and realize we can't control what they think. We cannot control what they do. We can only be responsible for ourselves at this time, okay? Okay, the next one I wanted to talk about was kind of like... um the timing thing one thing i'll say is that it is so cool and so fun to explore tools it is so cool and so fun to be aware of portal energy and such um it is it is absolutely one of the most fascinating and, and fun things that we can do at this time because these tools are at our at our disposal um do not surrender your power over to said tools. This is something I've talked about before. These tools are really, really good for affirmations. So say you've been feeling something and you just know in your gut that it's right, but then you're like still learning how to trust yourself fully and you pull and you're like, wow, man, that's what I thought. That's exactly what it felt like. Put yourself a pat on the back and you affirmed yourself, you know? but you just in codependency on tools and stuff like that. You're, you're, you're the psychic, you're the intuit. There's nothing wrong with using and asking for help. There is nothing wrong with that, but just don't surrender your power over at this time. For example, like a Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde, um, we can give power to it and be like, damn, Mercury retrograde sucks, which you know what? I've been there. I have had very difficult 
I remember my 27th birthday was on a Mercury retrograde and I was like, wow, that's a lot of issues coming up. I just spit. And it's like, wow, that's a lot that I need to look at. But it's all about our perspective too. So as Mercury retrograde came up, can I be aware that, hey, communication might be off. Hey, my tech is acting funky. But I also don't surrender my power and say, I'm going to have a bad, bad day because it's Mercury retrograde. No, Mercury retrograde doesn't have power over me. No, it doesn't. The next one is Intel. Yeah. Uh, for me personally, I so, you know, um, my beautiful friend, Spiritual Sunshine, she said, I am so thankful for the Intel, but it is not necessary for me at this point in my soul evolution. And I was like, yeah. So we're grateful for it. I'm thankful for it. There's, there's I, like, even like, there's so much stuff that's been happening that we would have no idea what's going on underneath unless we just energetically kept feeling into it. But but the intel thing is it's such a slippery slope because everyone's trying to decode and sift through at this time. So it could also be, again, their consciousness or what they believe at this time too. So take intel with a grain of salt. I like to do this at a neutral standpoint too. If I'm enjoying it and I'm interested and I'm feeling it, I'm like, yes, that resonates with me. I take it, I hold it in my knowing, but if it doesn't happen, can you accept that? That didn't happen on said date or this isn't panning out how I expected it to pan out. And that is okay because it's still panning out every now moment um so <laughs> so is it draining you is the intel draining you can you be neutral can you play into it when it feels good um another thing about this would be looking for intel or information or tech we're in a really surrendered time at this time so i like to ask myself can i detach from my tech for a day or can i because it there we have this case of fomo like something's gonna happen something's gonna happen also because the energy does kind of answer that things are happening energies are intense um kp indexes schumann's reference has been a little quiet a couple little bursts here and there but but we're aware that things are shifting and changing in every 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 now moment um and we're watching a collapse and it sometimes feels like we're watching a collapse in a slow motion right so <laughs> for me it's like can i if i get really addicted to something can i watch myself detach take it away for a day can i do three days can i retreat ask yourself and you'll notice if you're if you're addicted to it or not am i addicted to the intel and i think we've all been there we're like it's gonna happen it's gonna happen but but it is happening and can we accept that it's it's a it's a it's a really a balancing act at this time for example for me i <laughs> be super transparent with you and be really careful um the kanye thing got me so excited because i actually kind of tapped into some of the ultra of the mk stuff and uh, he tried to get on rockefeller labels and they wouldn't let him until he got in the car crash and things really really shifted and changed after he got in said car crash so um i am aware that that might not be him i am aware that that might be a double i am aware that might be something else that's cool but is it playing out for the collective at this time that's what we have to ask ourselves okay i just all i'm saying is just unplug and step outside if you feel like you have to okay this goes with YouTube, email, the phone, all of the AI, but also our personal energetic space. We are such quantum beings. We forget our energy ripples across this tech. Our our, our energy ripples across miles of where we're living. I'm going to not sit on my feet because they're falling asleep. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to edit this either. So <laughs> we're just flowing with it. Um, Remember that we're quantum beings and, and this extends way, way, way past any physical understanding that the human mind can even comprehend how expansive and how dimensional, multifaceted and multidimensional we are. We have to take not only responsibility for um, the information we're taking in and absorbing, but the energy we're taking in and absorbing at this time. Going back to your gut, does it feel good? Does it not feel good? but also taking responsibility for our space, our spiritual hygiene. Um, that is always our responsibility, feeling safe, sovereign, protected in all moments, but you have the tools in your tool belts to cleanse those. One thing I like to tell my quantum healing sessions and, and also like only do what is your thing. Like 
your thing might be different. I did something different today. Sometimes I'll light torches in all corners of all rooms in my house and I'll sage. So I do two, I try and do two things. I try and do one that's a physical cleanser. So for example, sage or salt bath for me personally. Um, it, there's some incense going while I'm saging, uh, essential oil, you know, there's uh, crystals, physical things. And then I try and do one energetic thing. Um, that could be blue flame, that could be violet flame, that could be Christ consciousness source photonic light energy. Uh, it, it could be, it could be anything that is your thing. And, and if you don't have the thing yet, start to, start to feel it out and start to develop something that maybe resonates with you. Um, for example, I, I usually light torches of photonic light. Today I made them stars. Oh, and a lot of people do the bubble. I love the bubble. I had a pink bubble around me for the longest time, my friends. Um, let's put her back up. Oh, she's back. <laughs> but um, one thing I did today that was so fun was in all corners of the room, instead of the torch, I subbed it for like a star shape, kind of like a Merkaba, but I, I programmed it differently. And what I let it do was um, I let it connect like like gridded all over my house and then at the very top it almost went into this like pyramid shape it was really really cool today so if play with it it's there's nothing perfect there's nothing perfect it's what resonates with you and what feels good for you okay so we are so responsible for our energetic space at this time like i tell my quantum healing sessions in the little printout there's a couple of suggestions of things you can do for your space i like to do one physical and again <laughs> like for example let's just <laughs> Let's get physical. Let's get physical. Oh God, I should not sing. Whatever, we're gonna flow with it. I'm not gonna even edit this out. We're just gonna keep going after I light this. Mm. And just take a minute and set your intentions. I like to set my intentions over tea too. I think I told some of you guys that. My other intention for this, having everything already out was so that I don't ramble. <laughs> yeah, how's that going? <laughs> And also the other thing about that too is um, you don't have to respond to texts every day. You don't have to respond to your emails every day. Have some have some balance and boundaries. It's okay. It'll every everything in divine timing too. I I've, I've had people be like, I felt like I was supposed to reach out to you, but I didn't know when. And then all of a sudden you know when, right? And it's like that with a lot of people too. You're like, wow, I'm feeling this person, and you'll know exactly when to reach out. So just just know that that not everyone has to have access to your beautiful gifts and ability and energy at this time um boundaries okay so my next one has been absolutely imperative for my most recent journey for those of us who have tapped into set events that are coming energetics and things like that sometimes we can find ourselves impatient especially because we know of the beauty that lies ahead the beauty that lies ahead but there is beauty now too in the hanged man and void and i'll talk about that in just a minute too but the first thing i wanted to talk about was staying present i have had um you know what allison co's video on the solar flash for her quantum healing session is absolutely incredible um it was it was so cool it was one of my favorite videos uh that i listened to like a year or so ago i don't remember loved it loved it loved it loved it absolutely resonated um time is irrelevant it doesn't matter we even say that in session anyways but i went into because I wouldn't, I, I'm just gonna be super transparent with you guys. I had to heal a lot over that solar flash event because I kept saying it was gonna fix everything. I didn't get out of bed. I was having this, or the, the, the escapism from, from earth. The, I, I can't believe I'm here. Like it, it got like to the point that I wasn't doing my self care or my work and it, and it became really detrimental and depressing. It, it, it put myself in a really, really sad, sad state. And that's okay. It was so beautiful that I put myself in that state because I'll never give my power over away again. So let me affirm that these beautiful energies and things are happening. They're going to happen. And from, from a higher perspective, they are happening in every now moment, but don't give your power away. Don't give your power away to that. Start to solve your little beautiful issues one present moment at a time. And as we continue to focus on those beautiful things that bring us joy in this now moment, you'll be so surprised how easy it is to override time. Um, find your joy now. Hold in your knowing things have begun and happening. 
hold the vision by amplifying the now and don't stop living. Don't stop living. Yes, these things happen. Don't stop living, please. <laughs> but again, like it's it's not my that's just my journey and my experience. So you, you'll figure it out. You'll know what resonates with you. You'll know what you need for yourself. And maybe holding on to that vent gives you hope. And it does. It gives me a beacon of hope too. And 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 can you trust that it is happening? Okay. Oof. Oof. Okay. Um this one's really hard to talk about. So we have been on a search of discovering who we are. And there's a beautiful tool in that. Um, once you know you find out there's an aspect of you that is galactic per se. Like when I went through that, it explained my acne. It explained my chronic pain, my chronic fatigue because my frequency was not resonating. And, 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 and I have friends who had similar things like really, really sensitive to allergy, uh, really sensitive to food, had sensitive allergies. There's, there's clarity in that. There's beauty in that from, and, and we also want to know who we were. <laughs> and that's where it gets complicated too, because we were so many things. And it also gets into a conversation of extensions, soul extensions. I have seen so many beautiful extensions of divine feminine energies at this time. We want to take those divine feminine energies that maybe we were, it could be masculine too, it doesn't matter. Whatever we have offered to us, we use those at tools. We don't necessarily step into that position, but we use that and bring it into the position we're in now. For I am Taylor, but I am also all these other things. I'm not just one thing, including one parallel past life. And, and, and all of us, I think it gets to a point where it's like all of us are equal. We are all equal, all beautiful, and we all came here to do the same thing and consciousness for this planet, okay? So you are the psychic, you are the intuit, you are the healer. We are all special, okay? And that being said, it is okay to ask for help. It is absolutely okay to ask for help, but also sift through that information too, because it could be their consciousness level. Maybe they give you a tidbit of information. You're like, wow, that really resonates. Take that and run with it and amplify it and see and put it in your truth too, okay? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, I wrote so much. <laughs> There's something else I wanted to go into about that, but um letting go of all limitations this has been my favorite one because not only are we breaking through glass uh glass ceilings of what this planet has been and how it's been controlled we are also breaking through spiritual teachings or old teachings that need to be broken through too um it's again it's not so black and white you're multifaceted multi-dimensional so many beautiful loving things you don't have to do what someone else is doing so remember that too as you're listening to this, like it doesn't resonate, then it's, uh, it's not mine, it's not mine. Get out of here, you know? <laughs> Anyways, you don't have to meditate like someone else does. You don't have to be a psychic like someone else is. You don't have to be any of those things. You are beautiful and perfect exactly the way you are. And holding and you're knowing that if, if you're waiting for activations or if you're waiting to activate your third eye or, or or have more messages the way spirit or your team or god speaks to you is going to be different you might find other people that you know have like the same little quirks and stuff like that and that's so much fun and so cool but embrace your uniqueness your 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 individuality and the aspects of yourself that you do want to be uh, you don't want to do things like everything else we, we'd never everyone else we'd never we'd never get anything done going back to galactics are dope being a star seed that's dope earth energy dope animals dope all of this is so cool but being a human's cool too <laughs> embrace it embrace your weirdness your uniqueness and embrace being a human we're here for this time and this experience and in in retrospect as slow as time perceives and has been in the past we're not we're not staying in that space we're not staying in that space so enjoy what we do have here enjoy what we do have here and find where it ticks and makes you light up that could be inner child work what did you love as a child what are you drawn to and also note that helping the collective too on some level means 
also discovering and helping yourself and amplifying that energy okay find what lights you up and the next energy is the wanderer energy <laughs> i get i'm the wanderer sometimes i'm also the hanged man i'm so many things but the wanderer energy we want to know no 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 i want to know everything which is awesome i think it's fun but again sift through and and take what resonates with you but also that wanderer enjoy the exploration of being a curious wanderer okay so ask yourself what is calling me okay this book has been like calling me i'm gonna read this book this land why am i so drawn to this collective at this time why why what's about what is it about it looking to the sky why am i staring at those stars what is it about those stars and the map is already written for you that's that's your map and enjoy every step of being on that map even the curiosity if we knew everything and we we didn't have our amnesia it wouldn't be fun to explore i mean it totally would but you get what i'm saying and enjoy and embrace that wanderer aspect of too you're gonna be guided you are guided yes yes you are guided and an adventure and explore all while surrendering that knowing that it's gonna come forward for you exactly how it's supposed to at the most perfect moment i like to call it the breadcrumbs you follow those breadcrumbs and it's kind of like in every present now moment also following your intuit intuition and your knowing and your feelings and staying so present while doing it your map's gonna the book's getting written your map is ready but enjoy it <laughs> enjoy it stuck and hanged man energy this is um a very very repeat thing i caught myself in it too uh so 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 i'm being super transparent like i i've been there like i got impatient i got i felt stuckity stuck but the stuck and the hanged man energy is actually a tool it tells us to rest when we need to rest. It gives us the opportunity to observe and evaluate. So if you've been observing and evaluating at this time, you know what feels good, what doesn't, what you want to move forward with, what you don't. And it doesn't make you, mean you have to do anything crazy. You could just start taking baby steps. Um, grab that book. Look it up online. What place is that? Oh, yeah. Start, start just curiosity and baby steps but also surrendering to the fact that we we don't have to know everything and and surrendering to the fact that this void is a tool for us to practice extra extra self-care and self-love and that a pause is necessary much like winter much like a womb and you don't want to rush that pause because who knows when things are going to start to feel like they are speeding up you're in control of that too if you are feeling stuck in the mud and you need to move energy it doesn't have to be moving mountains or crazy things for you will move mountains but it can be dancing it could be singing your favorite song it could be trying something new for example i was like curious about different things so i started doing like lymph lymphatic drainage in my face and down my neck and it feels really really good um trying a different tea i don't know playing a different sport you know just what what is that for you doing a puzzle it doesn't it doesn't matter so what feels good you get to elevate your life extreme self-care into love nurturing the self and knowing it's a tool that you have and when you're ready, you'll move out, move forward, and you'll know exactly when. You'll know when to come out of that cave. And if the cave is calling you to get out, start with baby steps. <laughs> the cave starting, starting to get, the cave's like, hey, you home? Are you still in there? <laughs> you'll know. You'll absolutely know. You're not being overlooked. You're not being missed. Absolutely. Yeah, um, I have another thing about boundaries and hygienes, empath trick. Uh, the empath trick has been used against us quite a bit. Uh, one of those would be changing of the um, earth's weather. They use that against us. Like, you don't like the earth. And like, excuse me, animals are my favorite thing in the world. You don't, you don't know me. You don't know how much I love the earth. So, you know, that would be an example of the empathy trick that has been used against us. Also, a lot of people, we feel like we have to solve everyone's problems or be there for everyone. Sometimes that's actually creating codependency in both parties, as well as um, overriding people's soul contracts. So if they come for you and they ask you questions, honor, respect that gently, 
And it doesn't mean don't speak your truth. Like, if you have something you need to say or get out there, you say it. You don't hold back anymore. But knowing that it might not sway or shift their opinions. or What are your intentions behind that? But but also, just, just know that we are not at our capacity to help others until we're completely full. <laughs> I think that's something that most of us already know at this time. And that goes back to like Force Awakening too. I don't feel like it's the time of Force Awakening. Who knows how people are going to wake up. That being said, if they're asking you questions about particular things, then you support them. You can plant loving seeds. Love them from afar if you need to have extra boundaries. There's nothing wrong with loving people from afar. Like, whoa, that doesn't resonate with me. I send you my love, but I'm going to pull back my energy. Nothing wrong with that either. Um, plant the seeds, but who knows what's going to wake everyone up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is... The complexity and structure of what I'm about to say. So I'm going to try and do this to the best of my abilities. I'm going to set my intentions to put my energy behind it so that you kind of understand what I'm saying. We are very aware on this planet that there is good versus evil. It is part of being in this spiritual war. It is part of the reason we are here. We would like to step into a positive polarity for the highest good expending an expansiveness of multifaceted multi-dimension uh no longer enslaved no longer controlled we are free sovereign beings make the choice make the choice make the choice it's your choice what you feed one but two are you against those things okay I'm not cool with that. A good example of that is the children. We'll just leave it at that. Have you felt the pain of it? Yeah, yeah. many of us who are aware of what had been happening had felt the pain of it. And some of us didn't sleep. Um, I had issues with celebrities. I was dreaming about what the celebrities were doing. And one day I will tell you some of those dreams and those specific celebrities, but I'm not even going to give it the time of day because one, I don't know if half these people even exist or if it's a facade of them. I don't know and I don't claim to know. But one day there will be a point when we're not feeding Lucia's that I will share exactly what I saw. Also, it could be symbolism too for what was happening. So... We have felt the pain of, for example, the children is a great example of that. But responding, what can I do for said children? Well, I'm going to send them love. I'm going to hold energy for them. Maybe some people join the military in particular ways. Maybe people volunteered at, at a hospital. Maybe you started to create in your mind what you would do differently. I want, that's the whole step. That's the next step. I want something different for this planet. We deserve justice. We deserve something better for this planet. And then we rise above. We stop feeding them. We stop feeding it. We stop talking about them. It doesn't mean we're not aware of it. It doesn't mean that this isn't going on to help wake up other people. But remember, everything feels like a giant, big, fat illusion right now because things are playing out to help wake up others. That some of the things that are happening might not be for you. So remember that. Can you stand neutral and detached? Aware of the injustice, okay? Holding what can I do for said injustice, whether it's from an energy place, a volunteer place, what is that for you? You'll know. You'll know exactly what that means. Like you just send a little extra love out. You are doing something by even being here. <laughs> the energy you are bringing in. It does not justify what they've done. And it does not give them any right to have any power over us anymore but i want to take it back i want to take the yummy balanced earth magic back that is respecting of universal law and free will that is that is that is where we're going and i don't want to give up my owls and my rabbits and my threes i don't want to give them that anymore so i take it back i say owls are for wisdom rabbits are for luck and fertility 33 i just need to be a little bit more balanced you can't have that anymore you inverted and distorted everything you can't have it anymore i take it back by rising above seeing the bigger picture how things are playing out but also being aware of the injustice and making your choice you made your choice now we rise above we watch and how do we want to change things? How do we want this to look going forward? 
kind of where I am now. I'm like at that point of, okay, well, what do I want it to look like going forward? What's for the highest good? And I allow that to come in. I allow what I feel like and what I see, I allow that by staying present, surprisingly. I'm looking to the future and what I create in the future, but by expanding my joy and my presence in this now moment. It's the biggest balancing act in the entire universe right now. The biggest (laughs) balancing act ever. Okay, let me see if there is anything else I wanted to bring up at this time. Again, only take what resonates. This is your journey, your story, okay? Mask removal, authentic self, Be the expression and you know what, be a different person every day if you want, but but start to start to create the expression of who you want to be in your authenticity because and your uniqueness too. Because that's part of it, you being here and being unique. <laughs> All right. So uh, the only other last thing I'll say is like the energy of things are not happening fast enough. I find myself micromanaging the universe and the more you micromanage the universe, the more uncomfortable it gets. Surrender. Find your joy in this now moment. And it sounds so simple and so silly, but you're going to be surprised of how much that energy amplifies whenever you actually step into that place of being present. Okay. There's nothing wrong with times. There's nothing wrong with dates. There's nothing wrong with intel. Some of those things are necessary for certain people at this time. You decide what is necessary for you. You make all these decisions. This is about you and your journey. Okay. Okay. So last thing I'm going to do is I want you before you make this decision, I want you to take a huge big breath. I want you to let it fill up and expand and let it go let it all go and in this present moment before you completely you know want something think about think about what you want and what's for your highest good but in the comments below if you want a quantum healing session for november like on me just I'll, I'll do like a raffle once a month and, and I'll get someone for this month um, of the month of November because I'm going to have to do November and we'll do a raffle. Um, just say in the comments, I would like a quantum healing session or you can gift it. So even if you're gifting it, that's you don't you can put that you want to gift it. You don't have to. We'll be in contact in a personal way if, and I'll do the raffle like publicly so everyone can see if that's something that you guys want. But if you want a quantum healing session, or if even if like you're not sure and you just want a PDF, shoot me an email beyond quantum taylor at protonmail.com. Sometimes Taylor Moon Tarot at Gmail gets things better, but if you're just curious, like I'll send you a PDF, like no big deal. Um, but if, if it's something that resonates with you and you've been thinking about, I, th- I think I'm going to do this once a month and, um, or if you want to gift it, it doesn't matter. You know what's best for you. If it doesn't resonate with you, if it doesn't matter. You know what's best for you. But if it does resonate with you and I want you to think about it, you can meditate on it, you can breathe through it, whatever. Um, just put in the comments, I would like a quantum healing session and then say one thing that brings you joy. <laughs> we'll go full circle. One thing that brings you joy. And I'll do one for the month of November and then we'll do another one. Don't worry about the next one. We'll do another one down the road. But yeah, so 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 do that for me if it resonates with you. In the comments, just say I would like a quantum healing session and here you say quantum healing raffle. I don't I don't care. Just let me know that you want one. You can also leave your normal comments below. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry this video is so long, but like, hey, whatever. Uh, Everything is meant to be how it's supposed to be. So yeah, and just write one thing that brings you joy. Yeah, that's all. That's all. So to only take what resonates, um, I hope this gives assistance and helps. I would actually like to say, please share around Joanne's video. Um, and then also if this resonates with you and you know people who are in the Great Awakening, who are struggling with the Intel um, stuff, you feel free to send that to them too. Like only if it feels right, but but 
I think that I think that this is the point where a lot of us are feeling things. So it's okay to play into the intel, but can you do it from a neutrality? Um, knowing things are happening and knowing they're gonna happen, but also taking a step back and surrendering. Okay, okay guys, I love you so much. Goodbye.